Good evening and good morning, everybody. This is Junichiro Shi from Kyoto. Thank you very much for joining us today. I'm at the Gate Institute, Vila Kamogawa. Air on Air Symposium is initiated by cultural institutions, Vila Kujoyama, Institut Francais Japan, and the Gate Institute, Vila Kamogawa, Kyoto Art Center, Embassy of Netherlands in Japan, in cooperation with the two artist residence networks, AirJ and Air Network Japan. After WHO announced the COVID-19 reached to the level of pandemic on March 11th, many international activities were canceled or postponed. And we have facing on a very serious situation since ever. Artists in residence program are also in the air. And we do not know even what will happen in next month. This symposium, Air on Air, aim to share the cultural curiant situation in Japan and Europe in terms of artist in residence scene and to bring different strategies, perspectives, and perhaps even hints or advices. The first day today, we will have seven people from Japan, France, Germany, and Netherlands. And tomorrow we will have three sessions from 12.15 Japan Standard Time, with a total of uh, about 20 speakers. For audience, please check the chat window. We will be, uh, we will, we will be sending the additional information that the panelists or organizations, they represent in their talks. And please, Please feel free to write questions via the chat function in both language, English or Japanese. The organizers will make sure that I am informed of your questions and comments. So please feel free to react. And also please note that the symposium will be recorded and put on the online for, the, uh, for archive purpose. And for speakers, uh, please mute your mic when you finish your speech. And please don't forget to turn it on when you start to talk. That's for the general remarks. Let's proceed for the contents. First, I would like to present Madame Fanny Laurent, who is the charge of the residence department at Institut Francais in Paris. I think she will introduce the general mission of Institut Francais and current situation on France, especially about the impact of the COVID-19. So please, uh, Madame Fanny Laurent. Thank you very much, June, and thank you. Uh, I'm very happy to be part of this uh, online uh, symposium. I will try to share my uh, screen if it's possible. Is it okay? Um, okay, so let's uh, introduce, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm, I'm Fanny Roland. I'm in charge of the residency department at the Institut Francais, as June has uh, just uh, mentioned. Uh, so the Institut Francais is a public agency responsible for, for French cultural action abroad. And, and we are working under the supervision of the French Ministry of Europe and Foreign Affairs and also of the Ministry of Culture. Um, so one of the main uh, objectives of the Institut Francais is to work to foster cultural understanding and promote the mobility of artists, artworks and ideas. And uh, we are working with a network of uh, 98 Institut Francais and also more than 800, than 800 uh, Alliance Francaises across the world. Um, so, uh, the residencies at the Institut Francais 
um, they are really central in our approach. And we think that uh, it's a unique opportunity for artists to enrich their creative project, to develop their professional network, and to innovate and generate collaborative projects. So we support each, the Institut Francais is supporting each year more than 150 uh, French and foreign artists uh, for a residency program all over the world. Um, so what do we do at the Institut Francais, the residency department? We are, uh, we are, are managing different uh, residency programs. Uh, and you can see on the right side of the, of the screen uh, a photo of the um, Villa San Francisco. We have a network of villa. Maybe you've heard about some of them. So the Villa San Francisco has just uh, opened uh, next, uh, last uh, August, but we, we also have, uh, of course, the Villa Kujuyama, and we are working closely with the Villa Kujuyama, but maybe you've heard also about the Villa Saigon in Vietnam or about the Villa Salambo in Tunisia. It's a network of villa who are welcoming artists for residences. Uh, then we have also a factory and uh, the objective of this uh, program is to advise and train partners for the structuring and implementation of new residency programs. And then we have a part of our activity is about perspective. So we are trying to explore new forms of residencies, new mobilities, and we also host conferences. Uh, so, uh, let's speak about our uh, topic today. Uh, what are the impacts of the COVID-19 on our activities? Uh, I would say there are three uh, major impacts. One is a major shift to digital. So, we have launched, uh, for example, in March when uh, France was in lockdown, we have launched an online open studio because we uh, were at, at that time we were welcoming around 20 foreign artists in France so we have decided to continue to promote uh, their work and so we we were able to um, uh, to promote their work in progress while they were working in a residency so this was in March and I know that the, the Villa Kujuyama also did an, an online open studio, I think maybe in, it was in, uh, in April. Um, so we also try to uh, use more uh, digital tools and we communicate during the, during the last uh, months, we have communicated a lot on what the artists in residence are doing. So with online portraits, with Zoom uh, events and also with interviews of the artists we are supporting. And we also had online conferences. So maybe some of you have attending the symposium we organized in March, in October, last October, which was called the Reflecting Residencies. Uh, the second impact for us would be um, the increased flexibility and mobilities. And uh, I wanted to mention one of our programs we have just launched, which is called the iPortunus. You may have heard about this uh, big European program. Um, it's financed by the, by the European Commission. And the objective of this program is to promote uh, mobility for artists and cultural professionals between 41 countries in Europe. And uh, so we have just launched this program uh, last uh, Wednesday. And one of the things we have decided to answer to the, the actual crisis is to um, make possible the change of destination until the last moment. So artists, when they apply, the artist can um, choose one destination and then they can change if uh, there is any difficulty for them to travel in this country. And we are also thinking about blended mobilities between physical and digital formats. And the last uh, impact is the push for green mobility. So we are trying really to um, encourage uh, mobilities uh, with uh, um, low carbon mobilities. 
and uh, we are thinking about in increasing financial supports uh, for these uh, low carbon mobilities. Um, so that's, I would say that's the, the three main impacts we uh, can uh, notice for uh, the Institut Francais. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miss Roland. That sounds really interesting there, especially iPod news. I'm very interested in it. Can I apply it? Okay, um, maybe I will ask you later. Uh, now I would like to present uh, Mr. Wolf Ilo, head of culture at the Gate Institute in Munich. Probably he will give us different perspective from Germany. Hello, Mr. Ilo. Hello. 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 Nice to meet Hello. you. Can you hear me now? Well, yes. Um, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Thanks for the invitation. Well, I, I, I will try to make it um, as short as uh, my um, predecessor and maybe we can come back to one or two questions later on. Um, yes, how, how did we, um, how did the Goethe Institute um, react to the um, pandemic? Um, let me try and um, <clears throat> uh, um, give you a sort of a systematic overview. Well, well, I, I think we had um, three, three foci mainly. Well, the first one was um, to try and give um, direct help to artists or try and in, in some sort to organize help for, um, for the artists because um, solo artists, um, as we all know, um, were in, a, in an incredibly precarious situation and um, so this was one of our main concerns. Um, what we um, did was um, to try um, and reach um, uh, as much flexibility as possible as far as um, uh, compensation was concerned, i.e. sort of contracts were closed, but uh, had been closed, but uh, projects didn't take place, i.e. sort of in theory, while we had not yet received um, what uh, we would pay for, um, we would uh, we try to and to be as flexible as possible, as the, as flexible as the administrative um, framework allowed us, and um, give compensation to the artists um, all the same. Um, this was uh, one thing. Um, where the second was to um, engage in. Um, also, um, well, to be frank, in, in, in lobbying work in vis-a-vis um, -vis our ministries to um, to raise awareness for um, this uh, particular um, group of society and the situation um, they were in. We also uh, developed um, various formats um, that try to um, give as much um, possibility for the um, artists to still reach an audience or to um, reach a possibly even wider audience. Well, we introduced a, um, uh, um, a platform called Kulturama, Kulturama uh, where um, uh, every live stream could be announced. Well, no, um, <clears throat> no curating at all by sort of, well, 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 we did look that no, um, well, racist, no, well, so, so, no, uh, ideologically um, uh, dubious uh, um, mm, <coughs> entries, well, or, mm, mm, events would be announced there. But, well, apart from that, everybody, well, really everybody could announce his or her um, event on this platform to reach a uh, a possibly wider audience. Uh, well, we had another, we also introduced certain, well, projects um, with dual effect. Well, one was to, to, to um, uh, well, the, the, the project content itself, but to be frank, while well, we also had, um, while well, we also did that in order to be able to um, pay the participating artists a well, um, of course, it's always a um, it's a, well, it's a, a, a sum of money. Well, sort of, um, I'm, I'm talking about projects like, for example, Danach Gedanken, well, which um, uh, translates to something like, well, sort of, um, a 
day after thoughts, um, i.e., was sort of well, it was a chronicle of um, uh, um, uh, of intellectual statements from all over the world um, on um, <clears throat> a, a reflection on their particular city, COVID situation, how it was in the country, and what they would um, envisage uh, the future to be like. Um, as I said, well, sort of this is interesting in itself, and it has well, it was one of our most successful programs. But it also enabled us to pay fees to these artists, to all and these intellectuals from all over the world. I think some fifty countries altogether took part in it, and through our network, and while with some, while with more than hundred participants in total, this was the direct help to the artists. Now I'm coming to the second point. That uh, that was the uh, the organization of direct help to the um, to organizations to partners from all over the world, and um, the Goethe Institute's uh, Institute, as you may know, is the the counterpart to the Institut Français. While we also operate in, um, <coughs> while we have we we have some hundred and uh, um, fifty five hundred and sixty branches, we operate in more than ninety. Um, uh, countries of the world, and in all these um, uh, local branches, we work with a close knit network of partner institutions. And in these institutions, um, obviously, were also badly stricken by the pandemic. And so, with the help of our foreign ministry, as well as um, some uh, uh, <clears throat> German foundations, we set up a relief fund in order to. Um, to help these, uh, well, to uh, to give direct help to these partner organizations. It was an open call; everybody could apply. And the the main difference um, was that um, in the framework of this um, relief fund, you could also finance infrastructure, which is something that we usually do not finance. But in this particular case, in the framework of this particular relief fund. Um, the 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 applicant, um, if successful, um, could uh, um, uh, find support for rent, for personnel, for procurement of technical equipment that would enable them to uh, to uh, realize a transfer a transfer a better transfer into the digital world. This was, um, uh, to be frank, um, uh, really, really, um, uh, well, <laughs> it was a real slog to set this up. It was a real challenge um, to set this up in the right, in, in the, in, very quickly, because well, sort of as a relief fund in itself, well, sort of it, it has to react quickly. I can talk more about that, but. I mean, this is something that we are actually um, uh, um, well, slightly, slightly proud of, even because um, well, sort of, well, uh, the main challenge was to, um, to it, that we had to do um, the conceptual work and the operative work simultaneously. Well, normally, you do that in sequence in order to get things done. There, we had to, so to speak, while well, we had to run and at the same time put on shoes. Well, sort of, this is. Uh, this was difficult to manage, but I think while well, we we did and we did it, and now um, the, um, this was for the second part, the direct help to organizations, and the third um, part I briefly talk about is digital. Some other digital projects um, I also mentioned. Uh, I already mentioned some. Maybe Encio, um, you would uh, 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 be so kind as to uh, as to put the links to um, some of these um, um, projects into the chat. That be, uh, that would be great. Well, another one was um, a festival we planned on post-colonialism. Well, we actually planned a huge festival in Berlin. Then uh, well, it was dated for March. Then came January. And so we had to uh, transfer it um, into the digital sphere in, in, in the course of two months. Um, well, we, we managed that. It, was, um, it wasn't easy. Um, but as we all know, it, it has um, disadvantages as well as advantages. And one obvious advantage is that um, you can get fantastic keynote speaker on very, very so short notice, like sort of well, something where well, you would never do in the mm, 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 analog world, like sort of ask somebody with 10 days uh, <laughs> ahead 
well, whether he or she would um, be <laughs> willing to participate, um, not only, as I said, in, as as uh, um, the um, as normal particip participants, but even say sort of a um, keynote speech, which is something, well, as we all know, that you usually prepare very much ahead ahead of time. Why sort of there we could do? Uh, well, this is the kind of thing that um, you can do. Uh, in the digital space, because uh, people do not, um, uh, well, you take out uh, just by 60, 45, 60, 90 minutes of their time schedule and not say three, four days um, uh, in, a, um, well, which obviously would not be uh, possible uh, on short, such short notice, which brings me. Well, another one, well, I could talk about more projects that we did on our own, but I will not do so for the sake of time. Uh, but uh, just, uh, I would like to finish on on the last point, um, well, which ties in with um, also with uh, what uh, the previous speaker said. Um, well, and this is an, this is a question that uh, remain still remains open for me. Um, Indeed, were sustainability, um, environmentally sound practices um, are very much um, dear to us and uh, certainly dear to me. And while we, um, well, our traditional business model was based on facilitating exchange, physical exchange, well, or cultural exchange by. Um, uh, by facilitating um, meetings, physical meetings. Now, this all takes place in the digital sphere. While we want to go back um, in time um, to, to our uh, previous work, but I do not think it should be the same. While we we should try to um, take into account as much as possible questions of sustainability and. Um, one um, uh, one measure, um, as uh, uh, um, the previous speaker said, uh, is, for example, to um, reward um, ecologically sound traveling. Well, and uh, I would um, be very curious to find out about more solutions. I'm, I'm very interested in the exchange about it. I will uh, finish here. Um, I hope um, I have not uh, spoken for too long and uh, I have not uh, spoken now on the residencies at all. If this is a question, well, certainly, was well, sort of the rather people uh, um, uh, much more competent to talk about that. Well, starting with NCO and uh, PR and and all the others others running residencies um, for the Goethe Institute, but um, still, well, you you tell us uh, what uh, you want to hear. Thank all right, thanks very much. very much. No, thank you very much. That's great. Yeah, um, it was very interesting information, and then. Yeah, that's so nice. Actually, like uh, we all actually challenging for new era, like a uh, new standard or like, uh, yeah, we are entering a different uh, situation. And then, yeah, many different institution or yes, like a cultural network, like a Gate Institute of Institut Francais is making, setting up and then launching on the same time. That's really great to hear. Um, yes, um, now maybe I'd like to go more, uh, I'd like to know more about Japan especially uh, about the situation in Kyoto. Um, here we have uh, Mr. Nobuyuki uh, Kitamura, uh, Supervising Director of Culture and Art Affairs in City of Kyoto. Actually, uh, City of Kyoto uh, hosted annual Lesartis gathering in the year of 2019, and the conference made a very constructive uh, international artist residence program network in Japan and also helped us to uh, set up this time meeting or this symposium. So networking is something very important. And then uh, now, uh, please, uh, Mr. Kitamura. Uh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, section, uh, Kyoto City Office. I'm glad to meet you. Two years ago, there was a meeting of Lesartis Foundation in Kyoto, and we had a good experience. Now, culture and art are in difficult situation due to the influence of the coronavirus. I think we can live without bread and wine, really. 
but we can not without culture and art. We, Kyoto City government, have decided to support them. So I would like to do my best to develop art in residence. From here, I will speak in English, sorry. In Japan, in March, the COVID infection started increasing, and Japanese government issued an emergency state declaration. In culture and arts, event performance and exhibitions have been suspended and cancelled. After the lift of the declaration on May 25th, culture and art activities have restarted gradually, but the number of events and attendance have not come back to normal yet. The number of patients started to increase again now. Uh, in Kyoto, activities of artists and culture and art facilities are restricted, and supporting them is an imminent issue now. In April, emergency supplementary budget was appropriated to establish Kyoto City culture and art activities emergency incentive system. And and uh, I want to support the people in the uh, culture and art field. So we conducted uh, a questionnaire uh, for more cross support. And in uh, July, an uh, artist, an uh, uh, performance and uh, event, uh, we established a subsidiary grant system for that. And currently, uh, the basic knowledge and the technologies for uh, uh, online tools and uh, data delivery, copyrights and the financing plans, etc., can be learned in a series of lectures we provide. Uh, the venue, uh, and the fees, and uh, uh, expenses for infection prevention, like uh, alcohol, uh, covered by Tokyo City as well. And furthermore, uh, the, uh, we opened the counseling risk for people in culture and art fields. And in Japan, some people say culture and art is not an eminent matter, uh, but uh, eating, clothing, and housing, uh, together with that, uh, for people to live a spiritual rich life, it is essential which I strongly believe we will continue to keep the light of culture and art by implementing the necessary measures uh, by our institute. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimashita. Great, yeah, to hear the vision, uh, future vision of cultural support. And now um, I would like to present Mr. Uh, Theo Peters, <laughs> Minister Plenipotentiary, who's uh, here right now, and then uh, from uh, the Netherlands Embassy in Tokyo, he's uh, here. So please, uh, Mr. Theo Peters. Thank you very much, uh, June. And uh, hello, everyone online. I'm uh, Theo Peters of the uh, Dutch Embassy. And it's a great pleasure, pleasure to be here today with you, to speak to you and with you from Villa Kamogawa in, uh, in Kyoto. So thank you very much, first of all, to Enzio for your wonderful hospitality. Um, allow me to briefly inform you about the current situation around COVID in the Netherlands, first of all, then on the situation in the cultural sector, sector in my country, and then on the activities of our embassy. <clears throat> the current COVID situation in the Netherlands is not encouraging. On average, we have more than 7,000 infections per day, and the emergency level in most of our provinces is at the highest level. The country is actually in a partial lockdown. Masks are obligatory for all people above the age of 13. We have to keep one and a half meter of social distance now, and all restaurants are closed and only allowed to serve takeout meals, like in many places else in the world. The good news, is that cultural institutes have reopened since the 19th of November. So museums and theaters are open. 
However, the cultural sector was very hard hit, of course. Our central government has issued two specific support programs to support the cultural and creative sector. First of all, in April of this year, 300 million euro was made available. And then in August, yet again, another 482 million euro. And in a third and general support package in October, another 40 million was added for specific commercial cultural producers, such as theaters and festival producers. These are big figures for us in a country where we spend on average 800 million euros per year on culture. And you have to realize that the Netherlands is about the size of Kyushu with a population that is only one eighth of Japan. Our country really exists thanks to its contact with the outside world and the trade with the outside world and thanks to our connections with countries beyond our borders. So travel restrictions and lockdowns cut us off from this outside world and this also hit hard on our artists as they are internationally active. As a government, we used to stimulate artists to go abroad and to develop themselves and bring back inspiration to us to inspire us again. After the 2000 economic crisis, the focus in the cultural section has been more on entrepreneurship and self-sustainability. Large cultural institutes were dismantled as part of budget cuts to curb government spending. And this gave rise to a biotope of creative entrepreneurs who collaborate on project base and are very ag agile and flexible. However, even in times like these, they are very vulnerable and many are left without something to fall back on. This is in contrast, I think, to some of our bigger neighbor countries like France and Germany, where large institutions are able to stand and withstand the ravages of a COVID-19 onslaught. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, on our embassy here and what we do in terms of cultural activities. We promote the cultural exchange between the Netherlands and Japan, as many embassies do. do. And until the beginning of this year, many artists, uh, architects, designers, have been flying to and from between our two countries. The pandemic forced us to rethink our strategy, and we have shifted in investing in online experiments under the slogans of let a thousand digital flowers bloom. Allow me to tell you a little bit about, more about this. Like we've heard from uh, Germany and France as well, flexibility is key. And we've been flexible with our artists where we had already approved projects before. We've been flexible with them in many ways. First of all, we were flexible in terms of the format. If they could find another format, a more digital format, we would support that. We've been flexible in terms of timing. If they needed a bit of more of time to see whether they were still able to come to Japan, we gave them that time. And actually, we had a photographer coming in in the month of October after um, she had to wait for some months, because initially she wanted to come earlier, but she still was able to come to Japan. So we were flexible on time. And then we all were also flexible in terms of outcome. Whenever artists proposed to do something differently, we gave them extra flexibility. And this was all under the principle that the artists themselves should not suffer. We were at least not suffer financially and not in their creative process. So whenever we could be flexible, we were flexible. And then lastly, I mentioned let a thousand digital flowers bloom. What we mean with this is that we wanted to use the creativity of the artists themselves in thinking of new formats and also in thinking of new platforms. So I hope we've been able to do that and we've seen some interesting results. And I think actually tomorrow we will hear from some of them on what they've been able to do. So this online conference is actually one of those flowers that we wanted to nurture to bloom. Artists in residence, has had our special attention for the last four years. 
we deem it a most suitable way for artists to be introduced and to be inspired by a country that is far away from the Netherlands, which is relatively close to them, which takes a lot of time to really understand and grasp, and where long-term relationships are the way to succeed instead of one-off events. In short, artists in residence or air is a very important tool in the exchange between Japan and the Netherlands. And this conference allows us to convey the situation in the Netherlands and Europe to our network, to our air network here, and to bring together the networks in Japan and Europe. So let me close. The international community needs to come together to make one front against the pandemic. And I think that this conference shows that in spite of the difficult situation, people can get together, like Villa Fujiyama, Villa Kamogawa, the Kyoto Art Center, and our embassy have done. Together we are now created, we have created, and we are creating something that will contribute to a deepened understanding of each other, inspire us, spark new collaborations that we can build, up, build upon. So especially in these difficult times, we need our art more than ever before, as our Japanese guest was saying as well. We have to keep putting air into air. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Teo. It was a great speech. I'm really impressed. That's, it's so great to hear the three voice from four voice from different places, France and Germany and Netherlands and Japan. And um, now I would like to go more deeper, like inviting three specialists to hear about a more global perspective in the cultural field. So um, let me invite uh, Mr. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, Pascal Birune uh, from uh, Lore Culture Europe, director of Lore Culture Europe, which supports European cultural operators. The Lore Culture Europe is uh, financed by the European Commissions and the French Ministry of Culture and the Foreign Ministry, uh, French Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So uh, please, uh, Mr. Pascal Brunet, we would like to know more about the general perspective of European cultural field. Um, thank you for the invitation. So uh, we are still in the, in the middle of the crisis. So it's quite difficult to have a clear idea of the consequences of this uh, crisis. But we, uh, the first survey shown that we have in front of a destruction of economic values in the field of culture of 28 to 30 percent. So it's quite a huge impact at the in the economy of culture. Uh, for a country like France, where economy of culture is something around uh, 100 billion euros a year, that means 3 billion of destruction of values in the field of culture. So there is a lot of consequences behind these uh, figures. Uh, one is uh, the difference between uh, disciplines and between uh, activities or field of activities of the actors. The actors of, uh, of digital are obviously winner of the situation. They have a lot of increasing uh, participation of recontition of their of, of their activities. It's uh, but. Part of the problem is uh, these actors are not really European. Quite a lot of these actors are from uh, abroad. Uh, the situation is really difficult for some uh, for life disciplines. For example, in the performing art, um, the first survey shows something like um, uh, 45 to 48 percent of destruction of values. That mean a lot of uh, consequences for the production, for the dissemination of the of the of the performances, for also the situation of the artist. Uh, maybe, as you know, the situation of uh, artists are quite different in Europe. You have different uh, uh, support to artists. We have the different of, a lot of different of regime, but we know that this impact it's something. More or less. It's an average, I give an average, but it's uh, you have a, 
for the European situation to decline this average to a very specific city in each country. Uh, this is the moment where we, this figure are at this moment. We don't know how long this crisis will continue. In different countries, uh, the institutional, the art institution are still closed. Uh, we don't know when they could reopen. And we know that we have a lot of production now uh, waiting for a dissemination, a correct dissemination. So you could imagine the numbers of films, for example, where to, we have stopped the dissemination of these films. So uh, we have a, a kind of overproduction and we have really to imagine after the crisis how we will do with this overproduction. Uh, and it's quite complicated. Uh, if you look at the situation of the market and the destruction of values. So we, we have this situation where we need to imagine a uh, response to the restarting for the moment where the activities will restart. And we have to imagine at the same time response to the transformation of uh, the economy of culture in the future. At the European level, at the moment, uh, we are working more about these two goals, how we could support uh, the restarting of the activity of the life, of the artistic life, and how we could support uh, the transformation of uh, the way we are working in art in, in general. So I will give you two or three lines of where we are working. When I say we, it's a European institution, but also the professional uh, represented through networks, talking with the European Commission, how we could uh, change or reorient the, the, the different programs. One of the main uh, consequences of this crisis is to show the, a kind of rematerialization of culture. Uh, we have really uh, to take in account this very strong materials uh, impact of culture. And uh, we talk a lot about digital, but we know that uh, a lot of production in art has to be shown directly, has to be produced in front of audience. And digital is certainly part of the response, part of uh, the modification of uh, the way we imagine uh, art and the dissemination of art. But we know that we are to work really deeply about the life, life dissemination of art. So one of these uh, consequences of this uh, remortalization of art, it's uh, uh, really how we could imagine a kind of uh, decarbonizing of uh, the imaginary of art. It's really one of the big uh, things we have to do. Uh, we never thought so much about uh, the cost of carbons of, uh, of art. And it's really, uh, it could be very far from art, but it's really in the, in the core of what we have to do. Um, uh, Jim Windle, a critic of art, talked about a kind of fossil aesthetic. And we have to keep, we have to leave this fossil aesthetic to a new aesthetic. It's not only a problem of economy, of a problem of material condition. It's really a problem of imaginary. Uh, how we can imagine a new way far from this fossil aesthetic, a new aesthetic. And it's um, certainly a lot of artists are working, are still working about this uh, issue, but it's really, um, a long transformation of, uh, of art. It means that we have to imagine how we produce pieces, how we disseminate pieces, how we organize the relation between arts and audiences. The second question we have, it, we could say that it's about sustainability, but it's more than sustainability. It's not really something to reorganize, uh, but it's something really to change the imaginary to change uh, the frame of where we imagine uh, everything in culture, theater, art, uh, and, and et cetera. The second question is really uh, to reimagine and to invent a new frame about the economy of production. Uh, 
it's really um, really uh, I, I could say maybe the main the main uh, difficulty we have. Uh, we have different regimes in different countries in Europe, in, but some of them have to face a kind of uh, overproduction, a permanent overproduction of art. Uh, because it's market of art, it's really, uh, you, you have a lot of um, production in, the, in this market, and some of them uh, arrive to a kind of average or to have a, a kind of long life in this market. And really, we have to reimagine the public uh, policy for art and how we could have more um, art with long, a long life, I could say. Not this ephemeral art we have uh, produced in the last uh, decades. Uh, this transformation is really certainly more important for the industries, cinema, for example, for the performing arts, certainly, and not really for the visual art, but really this idea of uh, rethinking the condition of production and the economic, economical condition of production is really uh, the main difficulties, the main transformation we have to do. So from the European perspective, uh, we have to imagine policy for this new green European Green Deal uh, and these consequences regarding aesthetics and this uh, transformation of production and also the transformation from an economic point of view and a social point of view. Um, the first initiatives of the Commission, of the European Commission, um, because it's, you have all this national response and the main response are still at the national uh, level as uh, our colleagues have presented before. But from the European perspective, uh, we have two or three uh, main uh, goals and practical goals to try to find response to these challenges. One is how it's possible to really support uh, a new approach between uh, art and the other activities of the economic life. Uh, the president of uh, the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, talked about a kind of new bows, uh, a new way to rethink the link between the life, art, industries, economy, with this idea of uh, greening, greening uh, well, something about the sustainability, but really something about carbons. And uh, this initiative could uh, certainly uh, create new cooperation between European sectors, but cultural, certainly European cultural diplomacy, but really it's a global challenge. We have to push this uh, objective, this goal, this uh, challenge, to a new global approach and a new global cooperation between artists, designers, and industries. The second uh, goals of the European Commission is how we could transform this uh, regime of production. Certainly, we have to imagine process to slow down the process of co-production, not to uh, stop, obviously, but not really to, the market is not able to slow down this, uh, surpro, this overproduction. So how is possible to slow, the, to slow down this production? Certainly to imagine uh, something regarding long approach, a new connection between research and production. Uh, certainly for the residency, a moment where we have really to think the goal of a residency, for example, it's more for research, it's more for production, it's more for which kind of impact and which kind of result we want, uh, in which kind of frame of time, in which kind of cooperation regarding different operators where an artist could do something somewhere and in cooperation continue something, the, the same work in another place and maybe arrive to a, 
a result in a, in a more long, with a more long perspective. And this means a new way of uh, imagining cooperation around artists. We need to reorganize our cooperation a little bit weak, where we, well, when, when we want to organize something, we want the result. And really the result has to be imagined in cooperation. The third point of uh, this uh, European approach is to rethink the link between education and arts. Not only uh, rethink the, 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 the place of art in education, but really the place of art in democracy, uh, the place of art in the democratic society. And it's really certainly the most important uh, objective we have. Uh, as you know, as everywhere, this crisis provoke a lot of um, tensions and Europe is like everywhere uh, in front of a lot of tensions in this different European society. And these uh, tensions are certainly something to play in these tensions. But we have to really reimagine completely the way we have approached uh, the link between education and arts. And also to imagine this in a more international basis and not only on national basis. And uh, this is uh, certainly one of the most uh, important, not for economy, but for the um, quality of our society, of the life, of the well being in our society. Uh, so how we could uh, succeed to attempt these objectives, these goals, is certainly to rethink cooperation, to re-enhance cooperation, uh, and not only European cooperation, but before European cooperation, uh, maybe less sometime, we are a little, little bit in competition, so we have really to rethink this to be more uh, able to have a common, a European common answer to this uh, uh, perspective, but also to have a more European common approach in the way we are thinking cultural diplomacy at this moment, more complementarity. Opportunist is a quite interesting uh, uh, example. It's really the result of the cooperation between uh, cultural, cultural uh, diplomacy. Uh, Goethe is really involved in this project. The Institut Francais is really involved in this project. And uh, as a group of cooperation, we could really develop and we could really uh, give a, a strength to this uh, uh, answer by cooperation. But we have also to re the cooperation through actors and uh, through local actors and through artistic actors. And it's really, uh, from an international point of view, quite important uh, level of action, the way where we could uh, coordinate cooperation between diplomacy, cooperation between cities, how this could be complementary, cooperation between artistic institutions, diplomacy and cities, are really the way we have really to reinforce uh, the cooperation. And I'm quite sure that this research of synergy, this research of um, less competition to more cooperation for the, for the art in the world are really the European way, essentially the global way, I think, if we want a lively, innovative and inventive arts in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor. Uh, that was a really interesting story. I would like to know more about uh, your talk. Yes, that uh, true that if we think about uh, this moment from uh, environmental issue, for example, like uh, age of Anthropocene or everything has good and bad effects. And um, um, it might be good time for us to, all, uh, all of us to think we can't go back to like before, not exactly the same like before. It's really great time. We have a kind of moratorial time to think how to uh, change and uh, 
it's so interesting speech and the, the keyword of mobility sounds really important right now but uh, first i'd like to go back to japanese situation and um, now i would like to invite uh, miss yuki asakura the research officer of headquarter for vitalizing regional cultures and the agency of cultural affairs japan so miss asakura please I am Asakura, uh, the head of quarters for uh, vitalizing regional cultures of agencies of cultural affairs, Japan. Can you hear me? Okay. Let me share my screen. So I'll talk about uh, the uh, artist in residence and uh, uh, Japan's uh, situation of our uh, air and uh, our uh, effort uh, for that. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I've been uh, listening uh, the presentations so far uh, with a great interest. And in uh, ACA, Agency or Cultural Agency, and we support artist residents uh, in residence. And the uh, other name is a program to create international base for the promotion of arts and culture. And we support the uh, efforts of uh, artists in residence uh, air. And as you see, so the our purpose is that the uh, domestic and overseas artists to stay for a, a certain period and interchange in various ways to contribute the beneficiary to their creative activities by programs provided by air air by supporting such uh, air programs international relationship of air organizing bodies will be strengthened and interactive international culture exchanging with artists all over the world will be the continue this is the target of aca and in 2020 uh, 20 organizations are adopted and for that uh, uh, activities, uh, the ACA supports their activities. And uh, not to, uh, no need to mention, but uh, the very important uh, factors of air is uh, it is uh, international exchange and artists overseas uh, travel coming to back Japan and going back to their company, and they stay in Japan for a certain amount of time and sharing uh, the experience and uh, the process of mutual exchange, those are very important factors. And I'm moving to the local uh, community and uh, cross relations, nurturing cross relationship is difficult uh, now uh, in this uh, uh, coronavirus uh, situation. And in this situation, uh, the how ACA have reacted I'm talking about myself, I'm not responsible for uh, this uh, program directly, and uh, I will report uh, the content that I had from the person in church. And uh, firstly, uh, the residence program is for uh, a international exchange. And uh, if there is a restriction of uh, the uh, the overseas artists coming to Japan. And from the beginning, we saw the difficulty to realize that. And uh, what uh, the adopted uh, organizations are thinking uh, should be uh, investigated. And uh, from the organizations, uh, we found that they rethink the uh, timing and program, and they also consider uh, using online for some, and they request ACA to flexibly allow uh, plan changes. Also, uh, they ask for information such as the status of each organization and uh, the uh, underbreak. These are the opinions from those organizations. And for the uh, change of the plan, so the uh, to realize the initial uh, purposes and uh, the uh, changes of the method were 
approved. So uh, we set this direction to cope with the situation. So now we continue to uh, implement the programs, and but the, the uh, pandemic situation is still tough. So uh, seeing the actual situation, we are trying to improve uh, our, the activities. And then that now we use the uh, word online. So in this tough situation, the online has been greatly uh, used in this situation. So I uh, heard the opinions of uh, AIR organization and they want to uh, seek something that they can do, uh, not just waiting for the improvement of the situation. So today uh, you will hear uh, the, um, the uh, programs or the opinions or uh, the efforts uh, today and tomorrow. But there are some things that we can get only from face-to-face uh, -face communication. Uh, so these are uh, the, for example, uh, the direct communication between humans also uh, staying in the area for a fixed period of time and feeling with the five senses also to realize, uh, to utilize original resources and uh, create art in response to the site. So this cannot be replaced by online, but there are something that we can do uh, online and there are others that uh, we can do only by online. For example, uh, holding the meetings uh, is less uh, uh, needs less cost and uh, it doesn't take so much time. And uh, the same thing can be said for our research activities and also uh, the artist, uh, the digital artwork uh, publishing online, uh, with which uh, we may see something new, uh, which had never existed in the past. And another uh, good points is that uh, artists who have difficulty moving can participate in uh, uh, many activities. So uh, in this situation, uh, because of this situation, we contrive something new uh, by combining uh, uh, the activities online and on site, we can uh, see uh, the possibility of the new style of air. So uh, this uh, is something uh, for sure. Uh, it is the importance of network and information sharing, which is uh, more important uh, than ever. So it is more important than ever to strengthen information sharing between air organizations. Also, it is necessary to have the opportunity to share this year's experience and a new methodologies among uh, groups and discuss the future of air. So in this respect, this online symposium is a good opportunity if for a domestic and foreign stakeholders to share information, discuss the future. So uh, the discussion today and symposium today uh, by participating in this, uh, that we can hear the very constructive uh, discussions. That's all from me. Thank you very much. Presentation. I would like to know uh, more, now going to go more local input. Um, now uh, we have uh, Miss uh, Mami Odai, the Vice Director of Air Network Japan and Director of Sapporo Tenjin Yama Art Studio. Uh, Mami Odai uh, will also join tomorrow uh, in the session one, but maybe we can hear more about uh, the air network from organizer's side. Please, uh, Miss uh, Mami Odai. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for giving me such an opportunity. Thank you very much. So it's my uh, it's very rare opportunity for me to attend such a symposium. 
and for the past 10 months, although I have attended very small scale meetings, so I'm very nervous. My name is Mami Oda E from Sapo Tenjin Yama Art Studio. First of all, So it's been a long time. I think uh, you're tired, but let me continue my presentation. So I'd like to talk about the response of Japanese AR to COVID-19. And as far as I know, I like to do my best to make, uh, make my presentation. When we look at the database of AJ, the biggest airport site in Japan, as of December 2020, there are 62 residences registered. Five years ago, Move at Japan, this is also an online portal site, conducted an online survey and found that there were more than 90 residences. Uh, I collected a lot of information and recently micro residences started at the local government level. So new style of residences have emerged. For example, in Hokkaido, where I live, AIJ has only two residences registered. However, as far as I know, there are eight heirs in Hokkaido. In the 1990s, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs introduced the idea or concept of artists in residence in Japan. And for the past 30 years, the air have experienced a lot of changes. And by reflecting the Japanese unique situations and social characteristics, it has evolved distinctively. More specifically, it basically is one of the structures in the culture and art field to promote art and culture and art, but in places where air operators are located, it has taken root as one of the tools for re regional development or revitalization and split nationwide as such. Such a phenomenon can be seen not only in air projects, but in international exhibition projects or art projects held in the countryside. And furthermore, recent tendency, the artist in residence started as an international program, but so not only international pro, uh, program, but we are welcoming Japanese artists as well. So artists in residence as an infrastructure of art and culture field does not have a long history, as I said now. In the field of culture and art, Japanese artist has got familiar with the expression artist in residence for about 10 years, I think. Therefore, a system to support air has not established yet. The system represents cultural policies, subsidy system, expert cultivation, or working environment. The lack of solid support system is severe challenges for us. Under such a situation, so COVID-19 hit air. So I feel the air operators were shocked because suddenly the operators started to communication so often after the pandemic, the pandemic started. Now, first, we started from fellow operators to know more about their updates, each other. And we started from such a private discussion and developed into our meeting. And Air Network Japan took the lead in hosting a meeting over Zoom to exchange updates each other. At that time, 80 uh, airs participated in the event. And since then, we have had reg such meeting on a regular basis. And then in August, so air operators in Japan held online meeting, official one. Now from the northern part of Japan to the southern part of Japan, 
a total of 76 participants uh, we had. The number of participants and the contents of the meeting told us the fact that many had difficulty in their own operations. So they had big difficulty. So let me share my screen now. But I'm afraid I cannot prepare a graph. Can you see my screen? So this slide shows in 2020, about 70% of air programs are conducted. According to the survey, small scale survey held online. And one of the organizations to dispatched this meeting, dispatched several uh, people to this meeting, and uh, we got, we received so 77 uh, responses and 70. 77 uh, from public square, uh, public sectors and 29 from public sector, uh, private sectors. So uh, let me explain the responses. So uh, uh, tell us about, uh, tell us about one of the biggest concerns regarding the operation of air projects. This is one of the questions. And the, both the public and private sectors responded that three biggest concern is Number one, how overseas artists can come to or leave Japan? And secondly, how to operate and manage facilities? And number three, contents of planned and ongoing projects. They are top three concerns. And other responses is about what kind of help assistance is needed for operations and specifically financial support and the peer network and so on. And according to responses, so respondent can one or more responses. And when we compare the responses from private and public sectors, the biggest one is that the peer network they require 30 percent and financial support and on the other hand the private sectors require 39 percent for peer network and Thirty-five percent for financial support, and then sixteen percent for opportunities to exchange information or consult among peers. And the outstanding response would be that the understanding in the society about AIR or cultural policies are needed. And uh, this slide shows that the impact of a COVID-19 pandemic. And tell us about your project planned FY20 from the present to March next year. Choose one from the options. This is another question. Uh, we had three options. And the postpone or changing the schedule and counsel and no idea or to be determined. These are options. And the public, as for public sectors, 52% will implement the project by postponing or changing the schedule and followed by the implementation as planned and the council or TBD. And as for private sectors, the most, uh, most uh, sector answered, they will implement the project by postponing or changing the schedule. 
and the 20% chose TBD and 13% will implement them as planned and 8% will cancel them. There are some differences in orders or responses, but overall about half the, half the respondents will implement the project by, by postponing or changing the schedule. So when combining the option, implement them as planned, 78% of public sectors and 55% of private sectors decided to conduct their project in FY20. Having said that, this survey only targeted organizations and individuals looking for an opportunity to exchange opinions. So, therefore, the results doesn't necessarily reflect a precise picture of air in Japan. I'm afraid. For a more realistic picture of air in Japan, uh, we can refer to results of May survey by Lizaltis and also the survey by Yukobo Art Space, Micro Residence Network, and Air and Pandemic Study Group. So they have started their own survey. So we like to wait for the results to know more about the situation. So amid such a situation, uh, there are some organizations who decide, which decided to implement a uh, program, but they switched to uh, remote programs, what we call online residencies. Of course, I think that they have some concern or they don't know exactly whether it's okay to do uh, residence, residencies in such a situation. So we need to reconfirm the potential of physical residence and we define the air and we think the meaning, purpose or mission of air, they believe. I think that uh, uh, they can overcome this situation due to financial uh, support from local government or other people, but some organization may face, uh, may go through bankruptcy in the worst case scenario going forward. So air in, uh, artists in residence as a support, as a starting point of artwork for artists, we have to go back to the starting point and improve and we establish the status of air, including policies and subsidy system and public money or subsidy allies have supported the operations by some of the organizations in Japan. In such a case, despite strict travel restrictions on overseas travel and limited mobility in Japan, they are conducting a project. This is partly because of the passion of operators themselves, but this is also because in Japan, money or subsidies from local governments have to be spent in a single year and they cannot be carried over to the following year. This is why they have to carry out the planned project. So even if the uh, definition of air has to be changed, they have to conduct or they have to implement the planned project. They managed to do that. And furthermore, so recently, a bad aspect of Japan, such as uh, people tend to expel outsider and so on, has been uh, has been exposed by COVID-19. However, under such a situation, there are some organizations which faced the negative aspect or negative reality of Japanese society, and so far. Uh, there are some, uh, we tend to focus on the positive aspects of air to explain the meaning of air, uh, the presence of air. However, in some regions, air is like, a, like an outsider. Of course, the situation differs or depends on the locations of regions, but uh, an excessive sense of caution or very, very peculiar or unique uh, status of Japan may affect negatively the operation of air or the activities going forward. 
However, there are bright aspects. So I would like to be positive going forward. So we are living in a new era and we are facing a new challenge. And together with artists, uh, we are operating air, uh, air. So I believe that situation will, be, will go to the better direction. This is a, a snowflake and small dust uh, gathered into a nucleus and uh, dust are combined with each other to form a very beautiful uh, snowflake. This, this is like an artist uh, which is uh, who are working very hard to start an unexpected project and time passes. And I believe that the artist's creative activities will continue forever. Of snow. Yes, the residence program really is like a human reactions. And uh, um, I think uh, the keyword of mobility is quite important. I found a kind of essence of air program is uh, uh, based on the keyword of mobility. So uh, I would like to come back um, I, I think there's two keywords that I really want to talk more or listen more. One is this, uh, the mobility and the, another one is uh, Mr. Pascal was talking about the decarbonization. And first I would like to know, uh, I would like to come back to Fanny Loran. Uh, if you can talk about the idea of mobility and then if you can briefly explain about the hypotenuse, Miss uh, Fanny Loran. Yes, thank you, Jun. Thank you very much for this uh, question. Um, yes, uh, maybe I can say a few words about uh, the iPortinus project. Um, first, for this project, it's a European project in the sense that we are collaborating with the, the Goethe Institute in, in Brussels and with uh, Isolatia in Ukraine, which is a um, an artist in residence uh, venues also. And uh, we are um, partners and we are uh, trying to test, to, to experiment this mobility. It's a pilot project. So we have realized the first uh, version uh, last year. And this is a second edition we have just launched launched but the idea of the European Commission with this project is to um, to create um, a permanent tool for mobility in Europe and uh, when we speak about uh, Europe and um, we are speaking uh, about 41 countries which is also um, really interesting it's not only the EU but it's also about the other countries uh, who are um, at the border of Europe. Also, uh, we are speaking also about Tunisia, for example, which is one of the eligible uh, country for uh, iPortunus. Um, I think that the main objective of this uh, mobility project is um, to uh, encourage um, the, the dialogue between cultures. Um, <laughs> And uh, so it can be a mobility for uh, collaboration, it can be a mobility for uh, professional development, it can be a mobility for co-production, for example. Um, and um, I think we, we are all speaking about the, the crisis we are facing. And uh, one of the consequences of this crisis is also that countries are um, maybe some of the European countries are um, closing or they, they, would, uh, tr they would like to close their borders or to make, uh, yeah, there is a kind of, um, uh, how do you say, yeah, some countries are more um, less open, let's say, to the circulation of uh, artists, of artworks. So these projects, is also about uh, staying 
open and make the borders uh, to be open and make artists um, able to uh, meet each other. Um, I don't know if I answered to your question, June, but uh, yes, it's a kind of, it's a challenging project because we are launching this project right now and we know that there are many restrictions in, in Europe to, to travel. So that's why also we try to be more as flexible as possible and um, so artists can change the destination if they want and they can mix physical and uh, virtual mobility. And so, yeah, we, I think may, many of the speakers today uh, spoke about this, this flexibility and the importance to continue to support artists um, being as flexible as possible. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Ms. Laurent. Um, yeah, I heard about, for example, the, the beginning of a university in the European system was kind of based on the freedom of mobility. People move and meet and exchange on experience and then knowledge, and then the, the, the knowledge developed through this uh, debate or, yeah. Um, so now actually we were planning to have a 19 minutes opening session, but we decided to extend 15 minutes more. So we will continue until 8.45 Japanese standard time. So uh, please uh, follow us a little bit more. Um, I would like to pick up another book, uh, the topic, the decarbonization that uh, Mr. Pascal uh, brought. And then I would like to ask to Mr. Wolf, um, you were reacting a lot. And then um, if you, uh, Mr. Wolf, you have uh, any idea for this uh, uh, decarbonization? Um, in your mind, specific strategy or, yes, please. Yeah, um, thanks for the opportunity to answer here. Um, well, and, uh, I'm afraid I, 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 have to, <laughs> I have to quit at uh, half past, so I, I, I cannot extend. I'm very sorry for that. I would like to stay on that. Um, uh, well, I think, um, well, it's, there, there's no one um, one measure to be taken in order to um, try and decarbonize our activities. Well, as um, experience in other sectors show, it is a more uh, um, question of um, really sifting through the whole um, process line, so to speak, and try to um try to uh decarbonate uh, decarbonize as much as possible and and really sort of and, and try and uh, look at um every activity um in your own field and and there you will find um, lots of examples um i am uh, against um what uh, i'm i'm against uh while well, looking at art specifically in terms of um in, in, in the environment where sort of there comes a point when where sort of the the well you have to, there, there is a trade-off between the aesthetic and the and, um, and the the sustainable but um let us do our sort of basic homework first and by the time we've done that where sort of other opportunities uh, opportunities will have occurred what what do i mean by basic homework well for example where sort of residencies well to to take just one example, uh, in this respect, much better than um, these uh, all these um, uh, short-term stays. Well, sort of there's really the question whether you have to invite somebody just for one, um, uh, well, for the participation in one panel. Like, for example, well, sort of I, I think it's fantastic to take part in this conference now, uh, to go over to Japan to do so would be I think pretty meaningless um, in in terms of um, the environment. Well, so this is one thing, for example. Where sort of so, so at every step you have to ask yourself, why well, sort of is that really sort of does it um, um, do I profit from this so much in order to pay the um, the uh, the um, environmental costs for it? Um, so. Um, 
or so what I sort of I, 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 what I see a question right now sort of does it mean to stop traveling um, altogether I do not think it does sort of why well, it should not but it um, but it uh, means reducing it to the necessary and I think at the moment um, much of uh, or not well, sort of enough of the traveling is 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 actually sort of not really necessary so, so we always have to ask ourselves: Is is this what sort of is the physical meeting necessary for 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 the success of this um, of the particular appointment? So, um, so these are questions to, to take. Why sort of in, in others? Why sort of obviously? Why sort of there comes the um, the question of the credibility of art also. Uh, well, there has been, well, sort of, well, I think a year ago or a year and a half ago, um, an article in a German newspaper, which I found very insightful, where well, sort of it picked out was well, sort of one particular work of art. I will not call it, not, uh, name it now, but well, sort of they, well, they said, oh, well, or, uh, right, listen, this is all fair enough and fine to, uh, to um, take a uh, stance for sustainability here, but let's look at how uh, at the full um, environmental costs in producing this work of art. So, uh, I mean, there comes a point where we have to adopt this um, thinking of the full costs of production um, to, to, to art as well. Otherwise, while well, we lose our credibility. Well, so thanks very much, so much for the for the interesting interesting conference, and I'm very sorry to have to leave at this point, and um, and I hope uh, it's it's gonna gonna go on like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Wolf. That was a really great comment. And then, yes, it's so interesting to have a different opinion. And then um, I'm still very interested in this. Uh, decarbonization and then uh, like uh, like a uh, Mr. Pascal brought us like uh, the goal of air program research or production. That's quite an interesting topic. I think we will talk about. If um, I I think I don't need to point out one per one person per person. Um, if you or some have a kind of a opinion or want to say something, please feel free to start turn on the mic and then um, we can discuss more frankly, I guess. Um, it's a uh, Japanese style. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, so one more, one more keyword that was very interesting was uh, uh, mobility. I think this word is not really common for Japanese people now, um, but it become, seems becoming more important in European country. As I said a bit, little before, the freedom mobility is really uh, based on the kind of history of university or like a intellectual, like a academic study or yeah, the exchange and debate and then, okay. So um, may I ask to uh, Miss Asakura-san, uh, uh, if you have a um, kind of a specific, uh, do you think the Japanese policymaker or uh, any professionals could be interested in supporting this mobility itself, not only organization, but the, the action of mobility itself? So, well, so far, regarding the purpose of policies, we haven't seen the word mobility as keyword, if I remember correctly. However, at an actual situation, when we look at the various types of network, mobility seems to be important, although the policy hasn't caught up with such a tendency, but at a residence level, mobility is one of the important topic, I feel. As for air, not only mobility, and as well as decommodization, the environmental issues are linked to air. But policy makers don't have such an idea. Of course, they have a kind of idea, but uh, we haven't come up with any specific policies regarding the environmental issues, including mobility and decarbonization. On the other hand, at the local government level, they try to 
establish a distinctive air project or artistic activities. Some of them focus on such issues regionally or locally. So this is my impression about these keywords. Thank you very much. Yes. Any comments or something you'd like to share with us? from other participants. Um, I would like to come back to Mr. Pascal, um, because you uh, brought larger terms of just air program, like uh, um, I would like to pick up this topic uh, again, decarbonization. And uh, yes, how can we uh, really adjust with like a uh, Yes, Mr. Pascal. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Sorry, it was not really proper question, but I would like to know, I would like to hear about your story again. Um, yeah, decarbonation is what one of the uh, um, trains. If we look at, the, the, at this moment for arts in the, in the world, we have a lot of different narratives of uh, going through uh, art in this moment. We have uh, the decolonial approach. It's one of the big uh, issue of, uh, of art at this moment. So we have uh, this um, also problem of genders. We have a lot of, ten, a lot of narratives converging to, to art. And one is this idea of decarbonation in this era of Anthropocene, as you have mentioned. We know that we have completely to change of imaginary. It's not something only technical measures to, uh, obviously, we have to take pra practical measures. We have to take care of uh, how we travel, we have to take care how we build, we have to take care of. Uh, how we organize uh, and why we organize some events. But it's more something about imagination. So the, it's really deep. It's really how we could reimagine uh, this um, way to, to stay on the earth uh, without this extraction and permanent extraction of carbon. And this is really a problem of imagination. We have really to invent new, new ways. And art is really um, in front of this uh, challenge of uh, change the frame of this. So it could take place in, uh, we have a lot of examples, how we could imagine a, a, a biennial now. Uh, when you arrive from everywhere in the world, when the audience arrive from everywhere, everywhere in the world, you have a lot of carbons everywhere <laughs> through, through, a, through a biennial. So how we could imagine something different? How, could, how we could imagine this uh, essential and really essential connection between artists and the uh, place we could exchange, where we could see, where we could uh, share some uh, everything about art. But really we have to change our imaginary of this event. It's not only uh, directly how we could conceive art, but it's really how we, uh, organize all the condition of uh, this relation with art. So it's um, some curators, some artists are working on this, on this, uh, on, this uh, on this objective at this moment of this uh, topic. Uh, it's really how we could normal. Sometimes it's how you could organize a biennial in another way, uh, where you are more locally. Can, we, where you are more in relation with the, the local ground, where you could see uh, globality on the local ground, and not to invite globality in your uh, in your in your event, but really to show that global is everywhere. So global, you could see the global the global uh, uh, impact and the globality in where you are. But this is really something we have to change. Uh, and it's a big issue for curators, for artists, for um, organizers, I think. Yeah, how can we imagine, how can we reimagine way of how to stay on the earth with the 
sub, uh, sub uh, so and using it. This can also translate for the, the, the example how we organize BNRS. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then the, our reaction with the art. Uh, oh, I think it's, um, we have to see you have some uh, experiences at the moment where uh, some, for example, some curators really examine how you could, um, we are in In this Anthropocene era, we have also in front of a lot of intersectional subject. Uh, it's not only to take uh, decarbonation from uh, and only this topic from all these other um, topic of uh, transformation of the society. So this uh, intersectional approach is uh, everywhere. Is for example in the way you organize the market of seeds it's uh, in the world and it's uh, uh, really it's something where you imagine a new way between connection between feminism and uh, environmental life issue for example this ecofeminism approach it's really a way to change the management the way to change the organization the way to change the relation with an artist and an institution it's uh, something working in every every detail of the ecosystem of arts, and it's really, um, I think, a big um, challenge. Uh, excuse, excuse me, Pascal, you mute. Okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, sorry, no yes. problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's really actually um, really now is a good time to really think. And then this conference, purpose of this conference is like that, like uh, we can't simply go back to before. We can't go back to human centric idea and we can't uh, compare simply by the number of audience in the Biennales. We don't really measure the success of the Biennales by the only the number of audience. We have to think about the contents and we have to think about our real goal or like a, how to make a sustainable uh, situation. Like a, we are in a global era, like a, so we all have to be more cosmopolitan. We have to think like a, our, the environmental issue or other social issue is not our other people's, it's ours. So we are facing all uh, in front of this, like a hardship. And then uh, this conference actually purpose to discuss, like a, it's a beginning, like a starting point. We can talk and then we share. So um, uh, I'd like to come back to Miss uh, Mami Odai. Um, uh, we are almost running out of time, but uh, if you have uh, some comments, um, yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, so Thank you very much. Uh, this is international uh, program. It will be really needed. It's something. And not uh, we shouldn't think only our own field. Uh, if we do so, we are stuck and France, uh, Germany, and Poland. And uh, uh, we, by hearing the uh, opinions or uh, seeing the actual situation of those countries, uh, we, I think that I can uh, step forward. So that is the uh, most fruitful uh, things that I obtained today uh, in this uh, meeting. Yes, uh, the discussion was really exciting and so interesting. Like uh, we uh, plan to do a 90 minute symposium, but uh, uh, we ran out of time. And now uh, we are almost like uh, 15 minutes late. Um, we are going to continue tomorrow, uh, 12.15 Japan Standard Time. And then uh, we will have three sessions all together, maybe nearly 20 speakers. I'm sure that 
the, the discussion will be much more interesting. Today was really amazing, but it will be more exciting tomorrow. So I hope you will come back tomorrow. And then uh, thank you very much again for everybody who joined this session. Thank you very much. Thank you.